friends welcome back to my channel today i am going to discuss some mcqs in broster dantes in this lecture i would like to share some more important mcqs related to the topic impression procedures in the previous lecture we have discussed some important mcqs related to this topic you can watch that video also so coming to today's lecture move on to the questions why taking impression of flabby fibrous tissue on maxillary ridge for complete denture care is taken to the options are use a tray with spacer not maintain intimate contact with the tissues use a close fitting tray and following normal procedures Coming to the discussion part, custom tray with window. This is indicated with flabby and displaceable tissues. Usually, the anterior ridges are affected. Minimal or controlled pressure impression is indicated for the displaceable tissue, while a normal impression can be made for the remainder of the arch. And this is another example of a selective pressure impression. The affected area is marked and blocked out in the preliminary cast. And a custom tray is constructed without involving this area. So, see some figures. In the first picture, it shows the maxillary anterior flyer flabby ridge, which is marked on the preliminary cast, and the spacer is adapted here. Okay, and here the custom tray with a window in the flabby ridge area. Okay, custom tray is fabricated with the window in the flat area chicken so the case care is taken to use the tray with the space so while taking uh, impression for, for flabby tissues on the maxillary ridge for complete edge the care is taken to use the tray with space okay coming to the next question what is cohesion what does it refers to options are physical attraction of like molecules unlike molecules resistance in separating of the film of liquid between two well adapted surfaces none of them so it's a direct question coming to the discussion part what is adhesion it's a property of remaining in close proximity as that resulting from the physical attraction of molecules to a substance or molecular attraction existing between the surfaces of bodies in contact and it is defined as in the simpler way the physical attraction of unlike molecules to one another so adhesion is the physical attraction of unlike molecules to one another the role of saliva is very important for adhesion saliva wets the tissue surface of the denture and the mucosa thin film of saliva formed between denture and the tissue surface this thin film helps to hold the denture to the mucosa and the amount of adhesion present is proportional to the denture base area in the patients with serostomia adhesion does not play a major role next one is cohesion the force whereby molecules of matter adhere to one another the attraction of aggregation and it is defined as in a simpler way that is uh, physical attraction of like molecules to each other the cohesive forces act within the thin film of saliva and the effectiveness of these forces increases with increase in denture bearing area watery serous saliva can form a thinner film and is more cohesive than thick mucous saliva so more cohesiveness is for watery serous saliva this picture shows the difference between the adhesion and cohesion so the adhesion is the attraction of sim dissimilar molecules takes place between the saliva and the denture base as well as saliva and the mucosa so here it is the uh, attraction of uh, unlike molecules which takes place between the saliva and the mucosa as well as saliva and the denture base here it is cohesion that is the attraction between similar molecules or like molecules takes place between the molecules of saliva present between mucosa and the denture base so here it is the cohesion that is attraction of like molecules of saliva 
itself. Here it is the schematic representation showing adhesion between the saliva and tissues and the adhesion between the saliva and the denture base. This is showing schematic representation showing the cohesive forces within the saliva. Okay. Coming to the interfacial surface tension, according to GPT-9, it is defined as the property of liquids in which exposed surface tends to contract to the smallest possible area, as in the spherical formation of drops, a phenomenon attributed to the attractive forces or cohesion between the molecules of the liquid. And it is defined in a simpler way as tension or resistance to separation possessed by a film of liquid between two well adapted parallel surfaces. It is dependent on the ability of the liquid to wet the surfaces. And the wettability of the fluid is inversely proportional to the surface tension of the surfaces. So, in this picture, it clearly shows the interfacial surface tension. It acts only when the two glass plates are pulled apart. When the two glass plates are pulled apart, interfacial surface tension acts. Okay. And the cohesive forces between the molecules of the liquid, that is intermolecular attraction and the adhesive forces between the plate and the liquid will result in preventing the plates to move away from each other forming a concave meniscus. So here it is the cohesive forces and here uh, cohesive forces between the molecules of liquid as well as the adhesive forces between the plate and the liquid resulting in preventing the plates to move away from each other and forming a concave meniscus. Here it is forming concave meniscus. And here it is the picture shows surface tension lost in mandibular denture. So, what does the cohesion mean? It is the physical attraction of like molecules and it is a retentive force because it occurs in the layer of saliva between denture base and the mucosa. Okay. So, coming to the next question, the lower denture bearing area has different compressibility. In your opinion, which is the most compressible tissue in the lower arch? Options are buccal shelf area, premyelohyoid region, labial sulcus, then retromolar pad. Coming to the discussion part, in the lower jaw, a triangular area of thick mucosa is found distal to the last molar. Here, this arrow mark shows the triangular area of the thick mucosa and basically it is on the crust of the ridge and it is referred to as retromolar pad. And this pad is extremely important in denture construction from both denture extension and plane of occlusion standpoint. And in this picture, it shows, it extends from the hamulus Above to the area of the retromolar pad, below is the tergomantibular raphe fold. Okay. And it is the junction between buccinator, that is cheek muscle, and superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. And it is often visible in the maxillary impression. And when present, it is an excellent landmark for determining the distal extent of maxillary tension. And it is usually insignificant while making mandibular depression. Okay. So, coming to the correct option, that is, most compressible tissue in the lower arch is the tremolar pad. Okay. So, coming to the next question, which part of the denture bearing area provides best continuous vertical support to the mandibular denture? The options are buccal shelf area. Retromolar pad, lingual vestibule, and the crust of the ridge. So, the, coming to the discussion part, the crust of the bony mandibular residual ridge is most often cancerous in nature. The pressures placed on the tissues overlying the crust of mandibular residual ridge usually result in irritation of these tissues and accompanied by the sequelae of chronic inflammation. There is the buccal shelf region which is bounded by external oblique line and the crust of the alveolar ridge. It seems to be better suited for a 
primary stress bearing rod because it is covered by relatively firm dense fibrous connective tissue supported by cortical bone these are the supporting and limiting structures of the mandible that is buccal shelf area residual alveolar ridge then labial frenum labial vestibule buccal frenum buccal vestibule retromolar pad lingual frenum alveolar lingual sulcus and retromyelohyoid sphinx so the, the supporting structures are buccal shelf area and the residual alveolar ridge okay so coming to the correct option that is best continuous vertical support to the mandibular denture provided by buccal shelf area coming to the next question which muscle has dual function as related to a complete tension masseter temporalis lateral trigoid and geniohyoid are the options the correct option is masseter since it has dual function that is it acts as both muscle of mastication as well as border limiting muscle Okay. Next question: When border molding a mandibular custom tray that will be used for a final denture impression, the distal lingual extension is limited by the action of. So while border molding mandibular custom tray will be used for a final denture impression, so there is a if a, the, the distal lingual extension is limited by the action of. Coming to the discussion part. before moving to discussion let's move on to that options there are superior constrictor muscle masseter muscle lateral trigoid and buccinator muscle so when border molding a custom tray mandibular custom tray that will be used for a final denture impression the distal buccal extension is determined by the position and action of masseter muscle distal lingual extension is limited by the action of superior constrictor muscle okay so these are the two important mcqs that is distal buccal extension is determined by masseter muscle and the distal lingual extension is by superior constrictor muscle so the buccal vestibule here proper extension of into this area provides the best support for the mandibular denture and this area is referred to as buccal shelf then the lingual frenum the proper borders must be established with movements of tongue when border molding genioglossus muscle influences the length of the flange during normal movements of the tongue mentalis muscle will elevate the mandibular anterior labial area unless this border is established by accurate border molding in the tremolar pad it marks the distal termination of edentulous ridge structure needs to be covered for support and retention and mylohyoid area the flange in this area must accommodate the movement of mylohyoid muscle in swallowing the retromyelohyoid area this area is limited posteriorly by the action of palatal glossus muscle and inferiorly by the lingual slip of superior constrictor so the distal lingual extension is limited by action of superior constrictor muscle next question aesthetic starts with options are taking impression occlusion rims teeth setting and selection of teeth so coming to the discussion part these are the objectives of impression making it is can be it can be removed it, uh, it can be remembered by the word press that is preservation of remaining structures retention aesthetic stability and support hence the answer must be taking impression okay then the retromolar pads as a landmark is relatively unstable relatively stable variable none of the above according to the article by right the retromolar pad is a relative stable posterior landmark even in patients with advanced ridge reduction so according to him retromolar pad is a relatively stable posterior landmark okay. so 
coming to the answer retromolar pads as a landmark is relatively stable what are these fovea palatinae the options are structures through which blood supply takes place mucous or salivary glands palatal termination of maxillary denture found in every individual the fovea palatinae are the two depressions that lie bilateral to the midline of the palate at approximate junction between soft and hard palate and they denote the sites of opening of the ducts of small mucous glands of the palate and they are often useful in the identification of vibrating line because they generally occur within the 2 mm of vibrating line so this is the mid palatine raphe it is a line in the middle of the mucosa of hard palate and which overlies the mid palatine bony suture and this uh, this one is the fovea palatina this two arrow marks shows okay these are two de depressions lie bilateral to the midline of the palate at the approximate junction between soft and hard palate and denotes the sites of opening of ducts of small mucous glands of the palate and here in this picture it shows the vibrating line it is a very important feature to be located in the construction of maxillary complement and it can be considered as the junction between hard and soft palates and it is important because it is the maximum posterior limit to the maxillary ridge so the fovea palatina are mucosal salivary glands and coming to the last question of today's lecture impression material of choice in patients with submucous fibrosis is options are syngoxide eugenol adhesion silicone condensation silicone and impression plaster according to this article by saumya chal a sectional impression tray technique for an oral submucous fibrosis patient with limited mouth opening so here the patient shows limited mouth opening in such patients we can do the impression by a special technique at a sectional border molding okay and here back spacer is adapted section the maxillary tray in a zigzag manner here it is zigzag manner handle on the first segment with die pins okay and uh, the second handle made on the other segment engaging the handle on the first segment and here it is the larger mandibular tray segment with a die pin smaller segment of the impression tray here it is the locking mechanism of the tray and in this picture it is the peripheral border molding done of the maxillary impression section trays then here it is final impression recorded with monophase impression material or adhesion silicone impression material here it is the mandibular sectional trays joined after the final impression so the sectional border molding of both segments were carried out in conventional manner using low fusing impression compound then wax spacer was removed from the first segment and the leaf holes were made the first segment was coated with tray adhesive loaded with medium body adhesion silicone impression material and placed intra orally the second segment coated with petroleum jelly along with along the midline was placed over to complete tray assembly with anterior locking clips after setting of the impression material two halves of the tray were separated excess impression material along the midline was trimmed with sharp instrument the four mandible and impression first the smaller segment impression was made followed by larger segment and the two segments were then joined so the correct option is addition silicone and that's all for today's lecture thanks for watching if you like my video please do like share and subscribe for more videos thank you